my current job, I'm not really working with any, any accounts or anything like that. Um, do, do I need to have relevant work experience to be doing AAT? No, um, because the way you learn and the materials that we have, and, and most providers will have an AAT app, will give you activities in accounting. So you'll acquire those, those skills while you're doing your studies. It's not all theoretical, you have to be able to prepare a balance sheet, a PL account, be able to post entries to the T accounts. Um, so it's, it's learning, but it's applying that learning. Um, and people who take you on will not necessarily expect you to have any prior experience in accounts. Obviously, they're going to pay you as much as they would someone who does have prior experience, but they're used to be taking on people all the time who have no experience in the accountancy. Now, if you can show that you uh, are comfortable with accounting and bookkeeping, then that's really helpful. So it's a matter of building up your CV, uh, which may just be theoretical, but there are lots of stages that you could start um, by sending CV out um, with your background, but they'll say, why would we take you on? So it's probably better to put on your CV working towards, so you could re enroll on the course, probably the foundation certificate in accounting. If you're looking for a job, rather than become a bookkeeper, register for this uh, uh, foundation certificate in accounting, um, and then put on your CV, working towards foundation certificate in accounting. And once you've done the first two units, um, then bookkeeping transactions and bookkeeping controls, apply for that's the foundation certificate in bookkeeping, whack it on your CV, and then write to the board again and say, hi, it's me again, and they go, oh, you again. Um, and, but it'll strike home because I think I'm sure I've seen this name before um, and they can see you making progress and if they can see that progress is happening relatively quickly you're not dawdling they go oh that looks good so you've got lots of opportunities to update your CV write to people um, and they go oh it's you again and if you write to people then you can and I would always suggest when you send your CV you, you can type it but a covering letter is always good um, I, if you handwriting is good, then handwrite it. If it's like mine, probably type it because they won't be able to read it otherwise. Don't say dear sir or dear madam. Get on the website, see who it is you're writing to. If they're a firm, they'll list their partners. So find somebody so you can write to a, a Mr. or a Mrs. or a Miss and write to them personally and sign it yourself and put it in a stamp dressed on bloke. The stamp, first class, because then take it seriously, not second class. And don't do what I do and put a Christmas stamp from about 10 years ago on it um, and handwrite it because it's personal. And if you don't get a response, then walk past and drop it off and hand it to them. Um, we have one of our apprentices, that is, that's what they did. They worked in, a, in a, a company in the finance department, they weren't very happy, it was a quasi finance admin, and they used to ride the bike to work and pass a phone with accountants every day. And he thought, ooh. I'd like to work there. So one day he thought, well, I'll pop in. So he just popped in and said, I don't know whether you're looking for uh, um, any new staff, but if you are, I'm really keen. Here's my CV. Um, I'd really like an interview. And they just happened to be looking for another member of staff. And I thought, well, what a bright lad. So they invited him in and he got a job. Excellent. Yeah. So you know, don't ask, you don't get. But he'd done the prep work. He'd already done some of the studies himself in his own time, paper it himself and they could see progress and he had a spark in his eyes.